All right, everyone, my name is Michael Noss. I'm a chartered market technician, quantitative trader, and for this particular video and things that you might see on this Discord of me soon, I am a mentor for the uh, trading challenge that's going on with the CMT. So we were asked, and I thought it was a brilliant idea, to do a quick couple minute video just talking about my style when it comes to this kind of long term, longer term trading and investing. And then we can kind of hammer it down into how I would adjust this for different people individually, but just to give you guys a starting place. So again, this is the way that I look at things, take from it what makes sense to you and remove from it what doesn't and, you know, make it your own. So I got some sources for you to begin with. First of all, you got to figure out your idea generation, right? How are you going to figure out what it is that you're going to trade in this challenge? A couple easy ways to start from my point of view, uh, which I should just iterate, I'm a relative strength trader, which just means I want to always be invested in the strongest names, ignoring everything else that's not kind of relatively strong at the time. Um, so what I like to do uh, is a, with a couple sources. So we have trade ideas here, uh, which is a paid for source, but I also have just a website here on stockcharts.com that would be a free source that just lists all of the spider sector ETFs, right? So you can individually go through these ones. You can see that there's a little ranking meters to show which one is high or low. You can say, I want uh, six months, right? You can see that the XLE or the energy sector is doing the best uh, right now, whereas communications is doing the worst. You can go in and then click on each of these and just get a chart and do your basic analysis see what it is of these that are interesting to you. Uh, however, it's just a quick look, right? We know energy utilities doing uh, great right now, financials, communications, technologies, a little bit under the weather. So if you're someone like me who wants to look for the strongest names out there, I am going to float towards the things that are doing well and kind of rotate that as time kind of changes. So here's the spy sectors. You can change and zoom down to different kind of industries if you want from there. Now, let's say, okay, you need to then zoom in and find the individual names. Well, one thing, and um, this is again, trade ideas for this, but there's a, a few services that will do it, is you can look at the individual names within that sector. So say I've determined that the XLE is the most interesting to me or the energy sector, and that's the one right up here, and I want to be involved in the strongest sector, well, I then may look for the strongest names inside that sector. And that might be as easy as scanning through, trying to figure out a few of these names that I think are interesting to me on whatever time frame uh, is the most relevant to my trading. But let's say, for example, I was actually looking at this today, Chevron CVX is a bit of an interesting kind of a move here where it's got this, uh, this big earnings gap right here. And it pulled back in to hold that earnings gap and now it looks like it might be drifting higher again. So you can see how a simple top-down analysis of this is the sector I'm interested, let me start scanning all of the different things within that sector and then let me look for some sort of technical pattern uh, to trade. Again, this one, just a gap, fills the gap and continues. What I would do for newer traders, people who are CMT candidates is focus on either a simple indicator or a simple pattern and remember your support and resistance training. So when it comes to uh, how I would trade something like CVX, you don't need to overcomplicate it, right? You can, if we zoom in a little bit here, you can see if I like the overall uh, sector strength and trend direction, I can just grab something and say, well, we've got a lot of resistance here. You see these kind of three candle highs. Say if we close above this resistance, maybe that's where I'll purchase a stop loss would go immediately down here and then, you know, trail the stop, simple ideas for trailing stops. Uh, check out key moving averages, to, again, depending on your time frame, the 10, the 20, the 50, you know, I wouldn't go too much further than that, but find some sort of moving average for trailing stop. If you want to pick targets, that's fine as well. Again, I wouldn't go too crazy with it. And I would just look at maybe some relative strength, right? So if this gets up to 180 right here, you can see that's the last high, a profit target a little bit before 180 might be something that makes sense. Uh, when it comes to position sizing and risk management, this is going to be key. So as someone who's traded for a long time and I've been doing this um, 
forever. You can probably see the gray in my beard. Uh, it's important to note that you're going to be wrong a lot. You know, 50, 60% of the time, you're probably going to be wrong. So you want to always set a stop loss uh, for every single trade. And that's obvious. And we know that, but at the same time, you want to make sure that that stop loss, when it gets hit, isn't risking so much of your account. Most resources out there will tell you anywhere from half a percent of your portfolio to 2% of your portfolio, somewhere in that range, maybe because it's a challenge, you, you dial it up a bit if you want to have a bit of fun, but you need to know that every loss that you take, you need a larger gain to make up for that. So always keep in mind, how do I size this portfolio? It should be always sized based off risk, at least the way that's the way that I particularly look at it. Um, another example, right? We can just go through and this is a, um, uh, sorry, a website called Finviz. I simply kind of looked for stocks that were in the S&P 500 and I filtered by RSI, if you're more of an indicator person, and just said, um, sorry, RSI greater than, I want to do greater than 50. And this will refresh and it will just show you all of the different names with an RSI that's over 50. A simple way to look for stuff that is uh, not in downtrends, if it has an RSI over 50, generally speaking, at least in the short term, you've got some sort of an uptrend, and then you can scan in the individual names. So, the first example was kind of a top-down type of approach where you look at the sector first and then you go from there. This might be more of a bottom-up where, for example, AES right here is a decent looking little pullback. It pulled back off the highs right here and then the highs right here. So I may look for this kind of 26, 27 area for a breakout. Uh, stop loss would probably be below this pullback right here, but then I can also look and see, okay, this is in the utility sector. Sector. And if I go back to what I was looking at in this screen right here, you can see that utilities was the second highest sector. So again, combining the concept of relative strength, up, top down, bottom up, however you want to look at it, those are two different ways to look at it. Just remember, you will be wrong a lot. Uh, make sure you're not doing any crazy YOLOs or anything like that. Size everything appropriate, have a stop loss for every trade. Understand that your target, if you're going to do one, should be uh, at least maybe one and a half, two, three times your stop loss, or have some sort of trailing metric, which kind of you know leaves you on board for the winners uh, if and when they do occur. So again, I will be uh, in kind of the mentor space when it comes to looking at and helping you guys out with this, feel free to hit me up on Discord, ask questions. You can also hit me up on Twitter. It's just my name plus CMT. Uh, we can chat there. Let me know what you think. If you guys got any other questions, again, hit me up and let me know. Talk to you soon.